Welcome to my tech club. Currently I'm on my workplace and I work on the food engineering department at Mata University in Budapest. And uh, every time when I had some uh, presentation about food safe CD printing, you know, printed parts, contact with the food, uh, some of the audience thought that I will talk about uh, food CD printing. And actually some of my colleagues from other departments got this idea for the cooperation. One of them want to investigate uh, testing different ingredients which can be added to the chocolate to improve the printability. And the other from the sensory department, they want to test different infills and their effect to the taste. And they asked me for the help. Now, a small problem we had that these are completely new projects and we don't really have a budget for it. So I have to solve this uh, as cheap as possible. And we have this ND3 V2 on our department, which we don't use anymore. And then I decided to modify this one and uh, I was searching for the extruder. And my choice was uh, Cakewalk 3D. Not the best choice for the chocolate and I will talk about this later. It's important to mention that this video is not sponsored by Cakewalk 3D. I bought this kit myself or by Creality. However, uh, channel will soon have its own sponsor as the Polymaker who wants to support all my future research. Now about this Cakewalk 3D. This is some kind of DIY kit, even if it arrived with some plastic parts, but they are quite thin and almost useless. So I have to redesign these to make them stronger and more temperature resistant. And I will explain this soon why. Now maybe this is good for some kind of sugar paste, but definitely not for chocolate. And uh, let me explain you why. The heater is uh, glued to the cylinder outside. This means that the material inside closer to the center will not get enough heat. And also these wires I have to solder myself and uh, one of them is almost below this holder. This is quite an annoying solution. I have two cylinders, so the second one don't even have this heater, only I want to show you. This one mm nozzle is in this plastic holder. This means it will not get any heat from this heater outside, which will be very important for the chocolate. Here is the most important heat it must get. And I think the biggest flaw in design, if you want to use this for the chocolate cylinder printing, is this screw instead of the piston cylinder solution. Because uh, with this, the viscosity must be very specific. If it is too low, in that case it will not push out the chocolate. If it is too high, in that case, or it will just uh, mix it, or even if it is pushed out, it will not stay there, it will flow immediately after one or two layers. And one more annoying thing, this uh, holder don't have any guide and every time I mount back the cylinder it may be slightly higher or lower and this means every time I start a new printing I have to set the Z offset. Okay, not a big deal with one millimeter nozzle, but definitely something I don't want to do every time. So as I mentioned only piston cylinder solution is acceptable for the chocolate cylinder printing, but I have to work with what I have so I have to try this extruder. First I preheated the chocolate in the microwave, it was very short heating, only 30 seconds. And then I melted it on the cooking plate. Then to increase the viscosity I added some water to chocolate, but this required a lot of experimenting because I started with the printing, it's not coming out, uh, take it out, uh, add some water, try it again. And approximately after third or fourth attempt, 30% uh, of the water was added. And after this finally I could see a uh, chocolate on the other side of the nozzle. Preparing of the slicer was easy. I just used Cura with the profile for 1mm nozzle. I slowed down the printing and I didn't change the E steps, only I increased the flow by 50%. Ah yes, an important change. I had to add M302S0 command so it will allow the cold extrusion. And the real fun started here. I just wrote my tech fun text in the Tinkercad. I sliced it, G code is copied to the SD card and the printing started. This was approximately 20 minutes printing. I repeated the same steps with the letters of my university. Just to have something to show to my colleagues. The next was my TechFun logo, which I had in SVG file because of the laser engraving. And from this I could create an STL file for the Cura. Then I googled for the cat silhouette image. I used JPEG to STL online services. And I got another nice, but uh, still very low printing. At this point some other extrusion appeared. This is because the cylinder was only one third full by now. So this is another disadvantage of this screw system compared to the piston version. We don't have the constant flow rate. And here I catched end of this printing. 
Now, because of this increased viscosity, I couldn't go much higher except maybe three or four layers because the chocolate flows away. And after this, I stopped the printing, of course, and I placed the plate in the refrigerator a few days. And after this, the chocolate became solid. And the lesson I learned later that uh, I shouldn't do this uh, on the cold plate, but I had to place it back to the printer. I heat it up maybe to 30 degrees Celsius, and after this, removing was much easier. So I did few experiments and printings, but here I stopped because I don't want to use this equipment anymore for the chocolate finger printing. Maybe it is good for the sugar paste, but for the chocolate definitely not. And I apologize, I hope you are not too disappointed uh, that this was only partial success. And I'm waiting your suggestions. If you have some experience with chocolate finger printing, or maybe you know some better solution, write me down in the comment section. And as always, thank you for watching and happy printing.